welcome to Be Your Own Best Coach with JJ, the podcast. I believe that the best coach you can ever have is that one person that is staring straight back at you every morning in the mirror, you. Join me in discovering some key strategies so that you can create an empowered life and inspire others to live theirs. Your journey to being your own best coach starts right now. Welcome to Be Your Own Best Coach with JJ. Today, what I want to talk about is mindset manipulation. Now, I love this quote from Tony Robbins. Stand guard at the door of your mind. I'll say that again. Stand guard at the door of your mind. You may have heard me say that before. And it is so important that we control and that we are aware of what is going on in our brains because what goes in comes out. And there are great manipulators out there that can fool us. Now, I want to talk about manipulation for a start because I'm a coach. Now, is there good manipulation? Well, I think there is, right? Because if you think of manipulation in regards to a chiropractor, a chiropractor will manipulate your spine so it adjusts your spine to get a better result for you. Now, as a coach, that's what I do because sometimes people will come to me and we call them limiting beliefs. They might have beliefs that are holding them back in regards to what they want out of life. And so it's my job as a coach to manipulate, to adjust their thinking so that they can then get the results that they want. But with manipulation, there also there's good and and there's evil and there's resourceful and unresourceful. And what I wanna talk about today is unresourceful, even evil manipulation that is possible. Now, I know years ago, you know, when I was a teenager, I was very naive and I used to think people thought like me, right? I thought everyone's out there for the goodness of others. Unfortunately, not everyone is. And I want to talk to you about, before I get into manipulation, well, one of the masters of manipulation are psychopaths. Now, psychopaths, there's a whole range of what a psychopath is. And a psychopath doesn't mean necessarily mean that it's somebody that goes out and murders people. They do, some of them, but not all of them do. We have workplace psychopaths, for instance. But there is a theme with psychopaths, and psychopaths can be masters of manipulation. If I look at the traits of a of a psychopath, you know one of the big things. If I, if I even just look at what psychopath means, a psychopath. The word psychopath means a disease of the mind. So in Greek, pathos is the disease, and psych is the mind. So it's a disease of the mind. Now some of the traits of a psychopath. Uh, One of the biggest ones is that they have no conscience. So they lack empathy. They can be really flattering to others, like overly flattering. They're really great at seeing what makes people tick so that they can build trust very quickly. So they may come across as charming, intelligent. However, they lack remorse. They can be pathological liars and very very good at lying they can be impulsive they can twist the truth and weave lies within it now that is just masterful when they do that they condition their victims so they know they slowly condition them so they build trust they understand what makes their victims tick and how they can then go in for the kill later on. They build trust, 
find people's weaknesses and they change the facts. They question others until they question themselves. Now, I don't know if any of you guys have, have been in a situation where you've worked with a psychopath or somebody that's a master manipulator and they're great at questioning you until then you start to question yourself and they start to manipulate the truth and you're like what is truth and what isn't truth am i going crazy that's what psychopaths do really well they point the finger and blame others and they play they can play both sides so there could be two people or two scenarios and they play both sides and they plant seeds on both sides so they're masters of manipulation and i love this quote from chris jarming and it goes like this just because something isn't a lie does not mean that it isn't deceptive a liar knows that he is a liar but one who speaks mere portions of truth in order to deceive is a craftsman of destruction. Let me say this again. I'll say the quote again because I love quotes. And, and every time I listen to a podcast and someone says a quote, I'm trying to write it down really quickly. So I'm going to say it again for you guys. So from Chris Jarmy, just because something isn't a lie does not mean that it isn't deceptive. A liar knows that he is a liar, but one who speaks mere portions of truth in order to deceive is a craftsman of destruction. Wow, I think that is such a powerful quote. And when I think of manipulation, it is that confusion, that weaving of, of the, the truth and lies together, that deception that really confuses people and then manipulation happens. You know, if I think about manipulation, I think of the world of politics. <laughs> and for anyone that's listening that's a, a politician and doing great things, good on you. But you will know that in the world of politics, there's a lot of manipulation. Manipulation from one party to another, from the public to the to what they how they use the media how they do their conference calls you know all those sorts of things there's a lot of manipulation happening now i'm going to be quite polarized polarizing right now and i'm going to talk about what's happening in the world so i'm going to talk about right now it's 2021 and i'm in australia in victoria and we're going through the COVID situation. Now, I know some of you are going to go, oh, gee, what's she going to talk about right now? And you're already thinking what's right and wrong. We've got our beliefs around all of this. Each one of us have, and I definitely have. I have a strong opinion of what's happening. But those that are listening and maybe have a different opinion from me, I ask you if you can... Be open to what I'm saying. And I'm asking you to maybe just try on the concepts. You don't necessarily have to agree or disagree. I want you to look at the concepts particularly and how they may relate to other things. So there might be stuff that you don't agree with and that's absolutely cool. And even if you get a bit triggered or you get a bit fired up with what I'm saying, it's like, oh, what she's saying, that's cool too. But just let it sit and look at the concept as it is. And so I've got some different levels of what I've been seeing that's happening in the political world right now with COVID. And I put them into to some, some type of process in my mind because I'm seeing a lot of stuff happening from a human behavioural perspective and from a programming perspective, which means that, you know, I'm seeing them putting mm -hmm. out messages so that mm -hmm. the public will think mm -hmm. a certain way or act mm -hmm. a certain way. Mm -hmm. And so I want to break mm -hmm. down some of the things that mm -hmm. I'm seeing 
And as I said, you may see it completely different and that's okay. But I want to share my insights for you. So you might get some nuggets, you may push them away and that's okay. But it's about how I'm looking at things myself and I'd love to share my insights with you. So one of the things that I've noticed with what's happening in the world right now is the start of, if I look back in, I think it was March uh, when it all happened, and I I look at that stage and it was like there was this, there was this problem. So you either create, so manipulators can create a problem or highlight a problem. So so with what happened with COVID, there was a problem. The problem was there was this disease or this virus that came out. Now, what I noticed was that the government blew it up. So a lot of leaders, if you look at great leaders in business, uh, uh, in, in any, you know, in a family, what would happen is le- great leaders usually diffuse. They actually make problems smaller so that they can make people feel better and more in control because if we blow them up, there's more anxiety and there's more fear. So what I noticed was that the government did the opposite. They actually blew it up. They made it bigger and they used really fearful language. And in in between that, and it was a bit shocking, you know, it was a shocking language that they use. It's like this is, you know, this is, uh, there's going to be a lot of pain and a lot of suffering that's going to happen in the next few months. And, and people might lose their jobs. And, you know, it was really quite a very shocking language that was given to blow up the situation. And then it was weaved into trust us. We're gonna, we've got you. We're all in this together. We're gonna help you. So after that shock and blowing everything up, it was trust us. We're here. And so I could see that, you know, that happening straight away with shocking, scaring the fear, and then coming in saying, it's all right. Just trust us. We're gonna look after it. And now some of you might be listening going, yeah, well, no, I don't think they blew it up. It was a really scary thing. Yes, well, it could be. But if you look at it, a lot of leaders will will actually say, we're in control. They would say it in a different way rather than the language that they used. So they created fear and they continue to create more fear. So they continue to create fear slowly throughout the days, the weeks, And what they focused on was the fear of building that fear. Now, whether that's intentional or not, but I'm I'm using this as an example of how people can make someone feel. And so this fear was very much, you know, they showed people on ventilators overseas. Um, And when I saw that, the first time I saw that and I saw the overseas people on ventilators, I thought of, and I don't know if you guys remember this, but this is how powerful this friggin' ad was because I'm now 50, how old am I? 52, I think I am. And I remember the AIDS commercial, the HIV commercial. Do you guys remember that? Where it was the Grim Reaper. And I remember it so powerfully because it was such a scare. Like I got scared. I looked at it and thought, my goodness, everyone's going to die. Right, And so, again, that was blowing up something. And I'm not saying that wasn't a horrible thing that happened, but what I'm saying is it was blown up to really shock people. Um, and, and so I thought of that when they were doing, you know, the hospital, the ventilators, again, saying language like super spreaders, uh, focusing on all the negatives around what was happening. So it was, firstly, it was deaths, and then it went on to... Uh, COVID cases when there wasn't enough deaths. So everything was quite negative and it was every day. And then there was lots of uncertainty because then there was, you know, they're called the lockdowns, which again felt like prison. If you think about the language, language is really powerful, guys. 
And so then there was lockdowns and then lockdowns, you'd get notice. And then as the months went on, then you get no notice. So then there's more uncertainty. And we know from a human behavioral perspective that most people do not like uncertainty because uncertainty is not, it doesn't make people feel safe. And so they're bringing all this uncertainty in the world, creating more fear and anxiety, which if you look at that, if we're looking at a virus and we want to be as healthy as possible, our mindset has to be really strong. And so anxiety is something that you don't want happening with your people if they're, if you're really wanting to help them with their health. And so that was really blown up. And then you've got the repetitive messaging. Now, those of you that know that our, our unconscious mind loves to learn in threes. So we're hearing this messaging over and over and over again. So we're hearing things like do the right thing, stay safe and stay home and stay safe. And we are all in this together. Now, this language kept getting repeated and repeated and repeated we might have visually seen it on posters. We see it at the back of the, when you know, whoever it is, the Premier or the uh, Prime Minister is standing up there and they've got banners behind them. There's that subtle messaging telling you that same thing over and over again. And if you listen to o the old conferences or the, you know, the, the press conference that they do, you will hear that they say the same thing over and over and over again. And then they have the logo. It's like this motto, stay safe and stay home. We're in this together. And then you start to hear, the. it's like a culture change. So if you think about it from a business perspective, if you're a business leader and you want to change a culture, you think of a motto and you slowly roll that motto out and you put it on your email and you put it on your newsletter and you put it in your tea room and you talk about it at your meetings and you do it over and over and over again until when you go and you start walking through your office, you start to hear your message because you've changed the culture, you've changed the language. And that's exactly what happened with the marketing and the programming of the people. So that when you went to the supermarket, you might see a friend, they're going, yeah, well, just do the right thing or stay safe. And then you hear it in there. You might do an email and the email says, stay safe. It suddenly becomes part of the language. And the thing is, with this conditioning and this, this if you call it manipulation of politics, they also hit the values of the human needs. Now, this is where it hurts, guys, because we all want to feel that we're a good person. We all want to know that we're doing the right thing in this life. We all, unless we're, we're a crazy person, we all love the elderly and we want to look after the grandmas and the grandpas. We love our freedom, our travel. Financial freedom is important to most of us. We love our community, our family, our health. You know, life and death is something that can scare people, right? So it's about, you know, I want to I wanna live for a long time. I want my loved ones to live for a long time. So all of this information, hit all of that. Firstly, are you a good person? Well, if you're a good person, then you do the right thing. Well, what is the right thing? Well, the government will tell you what the right thing is. And make sure you don't kill the grandma or the grandpa if you're not doing the right thing that we say is the right thing. And make sure that, you know, if you don't do the right thing, then freedom, you know, do you like freedom? Do you like travel? What about finances? What's going to happen? If you don't do the right thing and we can't open up anymore, do it for your community. What about your family? And what about your health? What about other people's health? You've got to do the right thing. People will die. Don't you want to live? So it's all those things that, it, that hit. And then what happens is that in politics, they use influences, particularly with COVID they have. Now, again, I don't care what you believe, but you have to agree that they've used a great marketing strategy. So if you look at celebrities, 
They've got these influences. So the influences can be celebrities. They're of people of importance. So scientists, doctors, epidemiologists, virologists. But it's only, you know, they say trust the science, but it's only the scientists, the doctors, the epidemiologists, the virologists, all of those people that they say are the good ones. And then others even though they have amazing experience. Like some of these people have been, you know, they, they started with the mRNA, for instance, developing, you know, uh, things with the mRNA that are now in the injections. And, and they're, they're not even looked at as, as an expert. So it's only the experts that they say that are the experts and the celebrities that they've used. And then what happens is these people, uh, and, and even the news, if we look at social media, and even now, you'll see that the news have, have ads saying, uh, we only tell the truth, we only talk the facts. It's really interesting that they have to highlight that. And so, and then you'll see that what they do and what they show. So if you look at celebrities, and I remember when black lives matters when that that all you know was something that was highlighted the celebrities went on social media and there was this big push about black lives matters and then now with what's happened with covid and the injections there was this big thing that celebrities started it they started with showing a picture of themselves having the injection now it started with the celebrities now isn't that interesting because just like the language, it's the, it, it, is, it isn't a, a coincidence that people walk around saying, do the right thing, be safe, be safe or stay home. You know, that isn't a coincidence. It is a, it's built into the programming system of manipulation. And it's the same with the celebrities. They're part of that. They're people that people look up to as somebody that is of importance. And so these people that are looked up to that have a huge following suddenly shows their arm and they start this culture of this is what you do. Because when, when have so many people done that? I don't know. I cannot remember. You know, a couple of times I've seen my friends give blood, but they never tell me when they've gone to the doctors and they they've had an injection they had the flu injection i've never seen any of my 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 people on social media do that but but once it becomes a conditioning then suddenly that's what you do and then it starts the people start to drive it themselves because they do it their friend does it and they continue and then it starts to flow where the people are driving the campaign because you've got all these celebrities and these people of importance driving it. And then the people start to drive it. And the interesting thing is that anyone that thinks differently, now you can decipher what's right or wrong, but the fact of the matter is that we all know that if people are thinking differently, so even these scientists, doctors, epidemiologists, virologists, politicians, other celebrities, anyone that thinks differently is discredited. Now, I find this fascinating because it's even changed. I've looked at people's profiles. I've looked at their Wikipedia. I've looked at articles. And suddenly, things have changed in regards to explaining who these people are. So instead of somebody you know, that uh, is a uh, well-known, prestigious doctor is suddenly a discredited doctor or a whack job or a conspiracy theorist or a tinfoil hatter or spreads dis misinformation or is an anti-vaxxer. And so suddenly all of this, 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 discreditation is coming for anyone that doesn't agree now that i can't remember this happening in mass like it is right now and so that that gives me alarm bells because i'm thinking hold on where are you manipulating my knowledge here 
because right or wrong, I need to know, I need to know the truth and I'm a truth seeker. And so when that starts to happen, I start to question, particularly when I look at some of these people and their experience and I see how quickly they're discredited. And then when the censoring happens, so we're talking about manipulation. If you're censoring, and I've been in a relationship when I was young where I felt censored and silenced, well, it's the same type of thing. And I look at what's happening with the government right now and the censorship of anything that doesn't match what they want to say. Now, again, you can decipher what's right or wrong, but you have to agree that there's a form of censorship. Now, whether you think it's right or wrong, that's up to you. But there is a hell of a lot of censorship happening right now. And it's really interesting the language that they use because they'll call people fact checkers, for instance, on social media. Where are these facts coming from? Who are these people that are fact checkers because there's some really it's really interesting because I even had I I don't know if you guys listening know of Grant Mm -hmm. Cardone who is a Mm -hmm. professional Mm -hmm. uh, a a real professional a businessman he's amazing and he did an interview with Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Robert Malone and he's video was taken off YouTube and all he did was interview this doctor but the doctor had a different point of view and it was off YouTube they took it completely off an interview like isn't that crazy now that and 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 Grant actually said once once that happens he started thinking well if they're censoring this this is a huge problem this is a huge problem and I've seen really interesting articles. I've seen things uh, and even medical papers and, you know, real life stories that have completely vanished from the internet. You know, I was on Facebook, a group on Facebook, where there was 95,000 people talking about the injections and, and what's happened, people that have died from them and people that have been injured and one day the, the whole group got shut down and these are, are people sharing their stories and I was like wow that was scary why is that happening why are they being silenced and so I started questioning that you know and Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter and Insta they're all censoring people I mean Twitter took off uh, uh, you know takes people off all the time You know, so we've got to really be focused on any, when we're talking about manipulation, whether it be about COVID or not, that censoring of information and silencing of people is a watch out. And it's interesting because I never knew this until I started questioning it and and seeing things disappear on the internet. That when you look at Google, they hide things. You know, there's been things I've gone to try and find again and it won't even pop up and I write exactly what that video is and it's not there anymore. But then I find the link later and I can get the link, but it does not come up in the search because it's hidden in the search. And that's quite scary, I think, in regards to manipulating what information I can see or what I can't see. And with the COVID, there's been a big marketing drive. You know, we've we've talked about celebrities, but there's also TV, media, radio, pushing the same story. We've got big businesses like NAB, for instance, National Australia Bank, who's changed their logo for the moment to say jab. We've got AAMI who are, you know, using katut from... <laughs> from, uh, you know, Katult and Rhonda as as part of their marketing program. We've got Qantas um, speaking up and saying they won't have people unless they've been injected on their flights. And we've got ads with celebrities telling us what, we, you know, what we should and shouldn't do. And so 
this marketing drive, again, using those key people, key businesses, the sources of media, TV, radio to influence, it's part of a marketing drive and it is about manipulating. And when I think about manipulating, it's about trying to make you think a certain way. And that's what marketing is. And then there's the subtle marketing as well, which I find really interesting. And this happens all around the world. But, you know, I'm a fan of some crime shows, right? So I I love uh, I love things like Law and Order and NCIS. And uh, lately I've been watching the show Bull. And what I found is the subtle programming is everywhere. It's everywhere i want you guys to look for it uh and and you'll be when you look and search for it you'll be so surprised because when i was watching bull the other night now it's interesting how many times they'll wear the masks on bull now do they really need to wear the mask they don't need to wear the mask because it's interesting you might see them come in on a scene and stand in and then they'll take the mask off right so they actually didn't need the mask and they'll, they even might walk in and then mumble a little bit and do a few lines with the mask on you can't see their their mouth moving and then they'll take it off and it's like why did you have the mask on anyway well they had the mask on it's a statement it's that that subtle programming and now i i look at law and order was a, an interesting one I, i'm not sure if i mentioned this on another podcast but Law and Order was an, such a fascinating one because I was watching it and it was this story of this child that died. And at the end, what happened was that they found out that there was a lady who sent her child who had, I think he had measles, to school um, because they they weren't vaccinated. And now that child gave the measles to this other child that died and so therefore the mum was charged with murder because she didn't vaccinate her children her child now even though you might go yeah but that's not covid it's linked it's a message it's a subtle message of making sure you inject your children right now right or wrong i'm not saying i'm not telling you what's right or wrong here what i'm saying is it's subtle messaging and the other day I saw a word, I think it's called word search on, on uh, Facebook. And you look for the words. And I was looking for these words and it had vaccine on there. And that actually wasn't a part, it wasn't a word to find. I think it was a, a word thing to say, oh, the, find a word that, you're, um, that will inspire you today. And it was like, you know, um, I'm empowered or whatever. It wasn't even a word to find and it wasn't the actual spelling of vaccine. It was V-A-X-I-N-E. So it was spelt differently, but it was still, it's that subtle programming that goes in your unconscious mind that is there. Now, not a lot of people would consciously be aware of it, but as soon as I saw it, I was like, yes, there's another message there. So we've got to be those guards you know, we've got to be the guard of our mind with all of these things. You know, at the moment when you go onto Facebook, social media, you have emojis. Now, we've got mask ones now. We've got injection ones now. You know, they, they are all suddenly part of, of what we do every day. And so they've incorporated that. And it's so interesting how we just, you know, that people just suddenly start using it. It's a culture change. And what then happens is it's like a herd mentality. And so what the politicians do really well with any issue is, particularly this one right now, is that they then, anyone that doesn't agree with what they say is right, they then look at them and say they're the minority. And they make them look like the minority, even if they're not. And then what happens is it becomes a herd mentality. People follow the herd. And then if they don't feel like they're part of the herd, one of the things that humans love is the, the, we've got a need to belong. 
And so those people don't be- feel like they belong anymore. And so even if they walk in, even if they've got an exemption for a mask, for instance, and they walk in to a shop and people stare at them, they're the only one, there's a real feeling of not belonging. You know, I had this beautiful lady who had been raped. She had been gang raped and she cannot wear a mask. And she went into one of the stores and she got vilified. It's like, you, why aren't you? And then she, she didn't want to say anything. She just said, oh, I'm exempt. And they said, and they started laughing. They started not laughing, but they rolled their eyes, the, the shopkeeper, and rolled their eyes. And then she ended up saying, this is why. And she told them why. And they still rolled their eyes. Now, think about how that would feel. And so that need to belong, she was like, she felt vilified. And so this is the culture that has been created by, you know, this is the right thing to do and this isn't the right thing to do. So the herd suddenly have this, uh, they start to drive the culture themselves. And, you know, they have other promotions like the, the, the frames that you put around your face for instance like the the you know i've just had the or I, you know i i agree with um the injection or or whatever and suddenly people are showing those frames and then people and then that division happens so you're either on this team or this team and so that division really you know and that and that makes people it brings up all these different feelings of uh, not belonging and conflict and it affects their relationships and people don't feel included. The other thing that the government do is that they have this misinformation. So it's confusion, there's, you know, they can, they deflect, they question, um, they question others until they question themselves. Now it's really interesting, there was a uh, a protest in Melbourne and there was this old lady that was 70 odd years of age and she got hit by a policeman and fell to the ground there's a video of it and she got hit in the head and she fell to the ground she was unconscious for a little while and while she was down they the, the two policemen sprayed her with pepper spray now, what then came out was a meme of somebody else and said, that wasn't an old lady, it was a 34-year-old man. And so then there was a, hold on, which one was it? Now, I saw the video, two videos actually, before and after, when she got up, uh, the old lady, and I saw this video. But then there was this meme saying, no, it's not. It, it's not that way. It was, and, you know, this, it was this man, I saw the wig. Uh, and then I saw an interview with this lady as well afterwards and saying what happened but whether you agree or not agree of if it was a 34 year old man or a 70 year old lady that confusion if we're talking about manipulation as a whole that then sort of you go oh I don't know what to believe and so then who do you trust you trust the person that you've been trusting all along that's leading you out of wherever you need to get out of and that's usually right, right now, it's the government. And so that confusion works for politicians. Now, I love this, I love this quote. It's an African proverb, actually. And it says, a lie has many variations, the truth none. And so we need to, when we're talking about manipulation, we need to have, keep that in mind that there's lots of variations in the lie, but there's no variations in the truth. And when we're thinking about this manipulation and we're thinking about what's happening in the world right now, it affects our every part of our human behaviour. So you might have heard the words cognitive dissonance. It's it's when you know something it's so so unfathomable for you to to believe. It's so far fetched for you to believe. It's like, you know, if you look at, say, um, you're, you're standing, you're standing at the, at the start of a street and you look right down, you know, 10 kilometres ahead of you and 10 kilometres, if you look right ahead of you, there's something there that you think that's completely not possible, whatever that is. That is so far-fetched, I cannot believe it. 
It's so far out of what I believe is true. There's no way I'm going to believe it. And then you standing in what you believe 10 kilometers the other direction. Cognitive dissonance is that. It's that, that path in between of how can you, how can you change your mind if, if the truth is so far-fetched for you? And the other human need that we have is the need to be right. So where you know, we can have this conditioning all our life and, and we've got beliefs that we believe that we've been taught at school for someone to say that it's not true. We had this need to be right to go, no, it is true. We want to defend what we think is true. And we also had this inclusion. We want to be part of a community. We don't want to be someone that's not part of the community. And then it's about, you know, it's, we either suffer or we comply. You know, that, that feeling of suffering and that peer group pressure. So all those human needs are hit at the moment. And the interesting thing is that there's information that's deleted in politics. So if you think about the situation right now, we're not... I don't hear anyone talking about, let's talk about health, the health information of eating right, vitamins, getting your sunlight, walking every day. Uh, we're not talking with the injections. We're not talking about those groups that are really affected, the people that maybe it's against their religion, maybe the animal rights people that don't believe in it, the vegans, the vegetarians, the people that maybe have some real health issues around taking the injection. We're not talking a lot about survival rates. We, you know, at the start of all of this or even the whole way through, we're not talking about survival rates or uh, suicide or domestic violence or injuries from the injection. All of those are not being talked about. And so, you know, again, with that manipulation, some information is given and others isn't. And then at the end of manipulation, there's always the saviour, the person that's going to save you. And so, you know, at the moment, the government are giving financial benefits. I heard that the uh, Aboriginal community are getting about $500 for each injection. And then they're getting food stamps and, and, and things like that for getting the injection. So these financial benefits, you know, the government, I'll help you. I'll give you some money here. I'll give you some, uh, 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 we're, the here, we're the solution because we're going to do the right thing together, aren't we? And and they'll often, politicians will blame other people, right? And you see it. One party will blame another. You see it on, on Facebook. They even have funny memes for each other. They'll blame other people. And so the reason for me saying this today, and as I, again, I want you to put it into perspective because some of you might have already switched off and may not even hear this right now. <laughs> and that's okay. Because I, I want you guys to be open and even if you don't agree with some of the stuff that I've said, I want you to try it on, the concepts on. That's what I want you to try on, the concepts. And I could have been really quite, uh, I could be really careful of what I've said. Um, where I, I'm just telling you guys how it is and how I see it. Um, and I don't, I don't expect you guys to agree with everything I say, because uh, that would be crazy. But what I do would love for you to do is to try on the concepts of how people can be manipulated. And again, Tony Robbins, when, as I said in the start, said, stand guard at the door of your mind. We must stand guard with the, you know, the door of our mind. You know, it might be COVID today. It could be something tomorrow. It could be the government, politicians, it could be your friend, it could be somebody, it could be your boss that can have a, a negative effect on your mindset. We've got to protect our mindset. And unfortunately, the, the biggest thing, and I hear this and I heard this from you know some dear people that I, I love, is that it's really hard to comprehend really hard to comprehend that there are people in this world that have not got your interests your best interests at heart now that could be a friend it could be a politician it could be the government it could be your boss it could be people around you and i i'm the first to say that i trust people until they prove me wrong but 
in my lifetime, there has been a few people that have really disappointed me, that I've trusted explicitly, that have turned around and completely shocked me and that haven't done the right thing. And there are, unfortunately, some evil people in the world. Now, I'd love to say I'm a coach and I'm all sprinkles and sunlight and lollipops, but the reality, that isn't the reality of the world. There are a minimal, you know, minimal, hopefully, of people. There are some people in the world that have not got your interests, best interests at heart. And there are some pretty scary people out in the world. And so we need to protect ourselves from that. And we need to be open and willing to look and to look at the strategies that some manipulators and psychopaths do to program your mind. So I want to leave you with this verse from Isaiah chapter 5, verse 20. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. I'll say that one more time. Isaiah chapter 5, verse 20. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Thank you, guys. For those that have lasted the whole podcast, I appreciate you, particularly those that may have different views on some of the subjects that I've touched on. Hopefully this will stay on YouTube and uh, social media and won't be taken down and that'll be interesting in itself to watch. But I really want to support you guys in opening your minds in regards to manipulation programming and those that aren't looking after your best interests and seeing the signs and the strategies that people use. And I trust that the people that are listening won't use some of those strategies to do the wrong thing. I share these with good intentions with you guys because I want to create a world where um, people are empowered, that they're achieving what they can out of their life, that they are happy and fulfilled and that we can have a world, a beautiful world of amazing people. Uh, and, you know, it really hurts me if I see that there's manipulation happening in the world that isn't serving others. Uh, and so, you know, I wanted to touch on that and educate you guys on what I see. Um, so those of you that listened to the end, even though uh, maybe my thoughts are a little bit different from yours, I really uh, commend you because that means that you've got this... Uh, you know, level of intelligence that you're happy to listen and to be open to different concepts. And as I said, look at the concepts as they are and then look at those and you can put those into whatever different scenario. Um, but I think there's some really good points there for us to look at and highlight going forward. Thank you, guys, and I'll see you on the next podcast. Thanks for tuning in to Be Your Own Best Coach with JJ. Make sure you subscribe to this podcast and follow me on Instagram at JJ Speaker Coach. And remember to live with insatiable passion, create an empowered life and inspire others to live theirs.